Hello, this is channel Easy Self Host. This video is the second episode of Self Hosting Tutorial. We're going to run the second application, Vault Warden, the open source password manager that helps you generate and manage your passwords. We're also going to manage and organize our self hosting configuration in Docker Compose, so we can easily extend our self hosting ecosystem in the future. In the last video, we spin up a server on DigitalOcean to run our self hosted applications. We purchased a domain on Cloudflare and pointed a subdomain to the server IP address. We were running two Docker containers on our server. The first one is Mammoth, the note-taking application. The second one is Caddy that proxies the domain name to Mammoth. And we got a nice note-taking app with secured connection. Now let's run our second application, Vault Warden. As an exercise, you can try to come up with a Docker command to run Vault Warden. This is the command we use to run Mammoth. All you need to do is to change the parameters I highlight. As a hint, I put the values in this form, and you can pause the video and try your command. So the command we're going to run starts with docker run, with the container name as Vault Warden, and the host name is also Vault Warden for convenience. The docker network is proxy net that we created last time. For data storage, we're going to store the data in a Vault Warden directory and maps it to the path slash data in container, which is defined by the container author. We also specify detach so the container runs in the background. And finally, the Docker image is Vault Warden slash server, which will be downloaded from the internet. After the command is finished, the Vault Warden container should be running. Like Mammoth, we're also going to create and map a new subdomain to the Vault Warden. Last time we used this command to run caddy, which defines the proxy rule in command itself. But we can't define two proxy rules in one command. Instead, we need a caddy configuration file which supports more complex rules. Now let's try to create and edit a file in command line. First, let's create a directory named caddy. We can use the command ls to check the directory is created. Then let's type the command nano caddy slash caddy file to create a caddy configuration file. This will bring up a simple editor. In this editor, you can start typing. First, let's define the proxy rule for mammals, starting with the mammals domain name, followed by a left curly brace. On the second line, let's add reverse underscore proxy, followed by mammals colon 5230, then a right curly brace on the new line. That's the proxy rule for mammals. Similarly, let's define the proxy rule for Vault Warden. The reverse proxy target is Vault Warden colon 80. The port 80 is defined by the Docker image author. Then we can save the configuration file using the keyboard shortcut Control O, followed by Enter. Then exit the editor using the shortcut Control X. We can then check by printing the file content using the command cat caddy slash caddy file. Before we run caddy, we also need to add the Vault Warden subdomain in the Cloudflare DNS. Let's go to the Cloudflare DNS setting and add a record that points the subdomain vault.goselfhost.com to the same IP address as Mammoth. Then let's go back to our server command line. To run the new caddy proxy using the configuration file, we first need to stop and remove the old caddy container. Let's use the command docker stop caddy to stop the container and the command docker rm caddy to remove the caddy container. Then let's use docker ps to check the container is removed. Now we can start a new caddy container using the following command. The name, network, and publish parameter is like before. But this time, we're going to map the local caddy file to the container caddy file path. And we don't need the caddy reverse proxy command again. After the command finished, we will have a new caddy container that is configured by our configuration file. Now we can check if we can reach our application through the subdomain names. First, let's go to Mammoth and refresh the page. Then we can start a new tab and check our new application, Vault Warden. The domain name is vault.goselfhost.com in this case. And our Vault Warden app is running as expected. I had a video about how to use Vault Warden, but here I can show you the very basic. First, let's create an account with a strong master password. Then we log in using the same account. After we log in, we can start to create and manage our passwords. We can use the password generator to generate strong and random lines passwords, and each of our account can get their unique passwords. You can use the Vault Warden server with the Beat Warden client applications that can help you automatically fill in passwords on all your devices. Now we can do a quick recap on what commands we use to run these containers. 
As you can see, the Docker command can get a little complex, and with more containers coming in, it's getting hard for us to keep track of these commands. There is actually a better solution for us to run containers called Docker Compose. With Docker Compose, we can write the details of multiple containers in a single file and start running all the containers using that file. Now let's try to create a Docker Compose file for the containers we are running now. First, let's create a directory called My Apps. Then we use nano to create and open a file called docker-compose.yml, which is the standard docker compose file name. We can of course use nano to write our docker compose file, but I think docker compose is a little complex for a simple editor like this. So we are going to write our file elsewhere and copy back the content. We can use the web vs code to write our file. The address is vs code.dev. Here we create a file and select the language as YAML, which is the file format for docker compose. Before we start editing, we can install some VS Code extension to help us write files. The YAML extension can help us correct the YAML syntax, and the Prettier extension can help us format our file. Then we can start writing our Docker Compose file. We start by specifying the file format version. 3 is the version we commonly use now. Then we start a section called Services, in which we will describe all the containers we run. Here we start with Caddy. The goal here is to translate the command we run into a YAML format. And here we start by defining the image path, which is just caddy. Then we define the container name as caddy as well to easily identify our container. Next, we define the ports mapping, which used to be the published parameter in the command. Here we map the port 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. In volumes, we map the caddy file path like what we did in the command. Here we use the absolute path to make it easier for Docker Compose to find the file. And that's all for the caddy container. Then we start a section for mammals. Like caddy, we start with image path and container name. We don't need to define network and host name here because that is already handled by Docker Compose. Next is the volume setting just like caddy and what we did in command before. And finally is Fold Warden. And its configuration is very similar with Mammoth. It just has image, container name, and volume setting. And that is all for the Docker Compose file. Before we copy back the content, let's format the file first. We can launch the format action in the search bar and choose Prettier as our formatter. So now we get a nicely formatted Docker Compose file. And we paste the content in Nano Editor and then save and exit the editor using the keyboard shortcut I mentioned before. We can use the cat command again to check the docker compose file content. Now we are going to relaunch our containers using docker compose. We need to stop and remove all the containers we are running now using the command. And as a reminder, this will not delete the data we already have. The first command is docker stop caddy mammals vault warden. And the second one is docker rm caddy mammals vault warden. With all the containers removed, let's go to the docker compose directory using the cd command. This directory has our docker compose file. We can use the command ls to check that. And now all we need is a simple docker compose command, docker compose up dash d. And this command will bring up all our containers. And we can check that using the docker ps command. Let's also go to our application website and refresh the page. And as we can see, the app is running and our data is still there. And that's all for today's video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the Docker Compose file on GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.